What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm our online campus director. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. It's week two of our new series, Be the Church. We're very excited about it. Uh, and if you don't know what this is, maybe you haven't joined us online before or haven't joined us a few minutes before the service gets started before, this is what we call the lobby. It's just where we hang out a little bit before the service gets started, like you might if you were in a physical church with a physical lobby yeah. and Michael was there. Yep. I thought we were calling it bro talk today. But <gasps> bro, I guess bro not. talk? <laughs> just, no. Interesting. Hattie, you have you can't stay Oh, apparently. that's right. Hattie's here. <clears throat> Hattie's on producer cam. So just... Yeah, I won't Mike, talk. Michael needs some bro talk. I won't apparently. talk for the rest of it. I'll just be here and show you the timer. Um, but I would love to hear bro talk. So. <laughs> yeah, well, We're talk what does bro talk entail? Smoking ribs and mm. <laughs> barbecued stuff and pizza, which yeah. we've... <clears throat> multiple Pulled meat people. and UFC fighting is basically yeah. what we're going to okay. talk about today. I, yeah. I, I just thought we should change it up I today. <laughs> well. <laughs> new year, new us, well, you know? <laughs> is that your Michael's birthday resolution? <clears throat> yeah. To have more bro talk? No. <laughs> Actually, it eliminates that. Um, as much. I think the first subject of bro talk, which Hattie, I would like you to be involved in. I can't decide is, if I should talk or is, not. Is going to be the neck pillow that Michael needs. <laughs> I think that's the most <laughs> fitting topic for bro talk True. would be Michael needing a neck pillow. Yeah, my neck hurts today. Yeah. I can't go this way very far before it hurts. <clears throat> One of my assistant coaches, um, on the, for those of you that might not know, I'm a high school basketball coach. And one of my assistant coaches always has a neck pillow on the bus. Mm. And I'm pretty jealous of it a lot of the time, to be honest. I feel like I need to get one. There's one at this specific gas station we always stop at in Minot, mm. the truck stop right as you're coming yep. in. And uh, is it Flying J? I think it's the Flying J right there. I think yeah. so. There's a Subway and a Cinnabon in there. Yep. It just smells like Cinnabon every time awesome. you walk in there. It's majestic. <laughs> but they have a really nice neck pillow. And every time I'm like, I should buy that neck pillow. And then I don't buy it. And then we get back on the bus. And I look over. And he looks so comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and I regret my decision. It, like, should I talk during bro talk? I think so. I, I already asked you if okay. you would. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you would save probably like twenty dollars if you got your neck pillow online <clears throat> as opposed to Flying J gas station. I believe it was it was either twenty five or twenty nine dollars. Okay. So but, maybe you wouldn't. But I could also, you know, it had like cooling foam technology, wow. so it's not going to get too hot. Yeah. That's amazing. That's pretty nice. Yeah. One time I was in an airport and decided I wanted a neck pillow. Yeah. It was way too late because you think that's a really bad place to buy it. But yes. the, the one I found pillow. was way cheaper. Okay. The, it, I want to say it was under twenty. Wow. Was it? It was, was it comfortable? Yeah, and it's one that <coughs> like wraps around more than once. I, so like it, it, you can you can double it in the front so your head doesn't sag into it. But then or you're you can, choking. No, Will you bring that wonderful. to the lobby next week so we can see what that uh, looks if I like? I remember. Okay. That'd be great. I've never heard That's of a very good chance double wrap remember. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I can almost guarantee Michael will not remember. Was it but. a scarf? Oh, oh, is that what those yeah. are? So oh. Michael bought a scarf <laughs> at the lobby. He was surprised. Do you guys like my neck pillow? <laughs> Everyone in the airport moved a couple seats away. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't do fully two, two times. Were there frills it. on the end of it? Mm. Or, uh, no, I don't think oh, so. Okay. It was gray. Was it plaid? No, it was gray. Good question. Good question. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I think I think you should just walk around the office with a neck pillow. I think that would help. We'll see. If I remember tomorrow, maybe I'll put it on. And then I'll just leave it here. For right, for next week. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if you do it, if you get the pillow, then Michael will feel comfortable enough to also do we, it. We have another trip tomorrow, so I will probably be at that gas station tomorrow. Nice. So I'll have another chance to buy it. I'll chip in $5. Oh, my word. I'm not giving you I, that's, I'm fine with that. I'll, I'll accept the $5. <laughs> Thank you, Hattie, uh, for saying that on camera. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Uh, I don't. That's the only topic for bro talk that I have. I, I obviously was not prepared. I wasn't either. I just <laughs> it was the two of us. I thought maybe we could try something mm. different today, yeah. but I'm uh, not the host. I so. mean, I'm fine going back to pulled meats. What's your favorite pulled meat, Michael? Uh, uh, probably just the roast. You know, just mm. a really good smoked roast. That's a great roast. A smoked roast. Yeah. Or actually, uh, one of our church members made us a pork smoked pork butt. Mm. For when Delicious. our youngest our youngest child was born, I almost said youngest son, but he's our only son. <coughs> and, and he's also your youngest son. And it was amazing. <coughs> it was so good. So that was that was probably my favorite. Yeah, that might be worth having another kid if someone's going to bring me that. Yeah, you should look into that. I might. I'll think about it. <laughs> I'm really tired just with the two, <laughs> but it might be worth it. <laughs> What's more expensive, just paying someone <coughs> to, to smoke me some pork butt or having another but, child? But the memories of a child will last forever. That's true. Mm, that's, that's good. Point. good. 
That's good. <laughs> uh, Hattie, your favorite pulled meat? Well, uh, we discussed yesterday. I didn't really think that I liked pulled meat. And, and then we talked about five different pulled meats <laughs> that Hattie likes. I, and I just, I don't know. I, I, it con- pulled about, meats confuse me. How about shredded? <laughs> like shredded meat? No, that sounds it? bad to me. <laughs> I think being in North Dakota for so long, I've had too many like shredded meat sandwiches that I just think that's disgusting. Mm. <laughs> but then David pointed oh. out my favorite thing at the barbecue place is nachos but they are full and i was like don't those have pulled pork on them <laughs> yeah and they're so good <laughs> i don't know my pulled meat very well but i do like it okay <clears throat> but not on a sandwich that's gross would a would chopped brisket count i don't think so okay because no. i actually prefer my brisket chopped sure um that's the only thing i i that we don't get at our amazing barbecue place here in town is sure. they don't chop their brisket hmm. um so th- i'd probably have to go pork then okay cool they have pulled chicken at that place, which I haven't got before. Yeah. I think I need to get some pulled chicken next Yeah, that's time. on the sandwich. That's that the like. one that you got, and it looked wonderful. Pulled chicken? No, that sandwich. sounds really bad. Interesting. Yeah. How about shredded chicken? No. The <laughs> about ch- chicken mm-hmm. shredded, no thank you. How about you. chicken not in a <coughs> breast form? Hmm. Or thigh? I like chicken thighs, but hmm. don't pull it. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't pull it. <laughs> I'm so fascinated by this. I think... W- so at a, a previous <coughs> job, we used to have meat parties where we would pull, <laughs> <laughs> where we would have, they would give us a big chunk of meat to prepare <laughs> for like an event that we were doing and we would p- have to pull it, you know, to make it sound fun, we yeah. call it meat parties. <laughs> and we would have to pull it. And I think that was part oh. of the reason why I like, like pulled Like the, the labor of doing it yeah. and it's made you not want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so But what weird. if somebody no. else does the labor for you? Well, uh, like on your nachos. I d- it doesn't really make sense. I don't, I don't. That's fair. Yeah. Nachos, hmm. great. Chicken, yeah. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I feel like I want to apologize for starting bro <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys familiar with meat raffles? No. I've this heard of them. This is a huge them. deal in Minnesota, like mm-hmm. a massive deal in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. You go to the bar or a restaurant or whatever, and they do like a meat raffle. So you buy raffle tickets to win yeah. m- meat. Did you ever win? I'm down. I have won meat at a meat raffle before. Yep. Let's do it. I want to roast once. Can we do a when I was in college, and I had no idea what to do with the roast. Can we do a lobby meat raffle? We definitely should do a <laughs> lobby meat raffle. That would be so fun. Somebody make a note. Uh, <laughs> lobby. Me- Somebody send us an email. Michael <laughs> at newhopewilliston.com. And just say, remember to do a lobby meat raffle. Don't send it to me. I don't check my email. That's a good point. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> new year, new you. You are so checking your email. Info, info, I do check my email. Info <laughs> at newhopewilson.com. That was last year that <laughs> new year, new me was checking, and it did not last very long. That's not true. 1% better every day. I still day. check my email. 1% better every day. I just don't day, always Michael. like delete stuff or look in at them. I check it, though. Like If there's something that looks important, I'm like, oh, I got to check that one. So in the... Subject header. Put important. Lots of exclamations. Meat mm. raffle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> or yeah, just just meat raffle. That'll catch your eye. I'm yeah. really curious yeah. the details <coughs> of a meat raffle on the lobby, just like the logistics of it. Like, we do we it each provide a meat? This is an on-air production meeting. We're gonna figure it out <laughs> right now. <laughs> do we each provide a meat? Thanks for joining us. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your suggestions in the comments, please. <laughs> that would please. be fantastic. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, is it, is it just us playing, or are the are like the people that join us at New Hope here? A part of the raffle. Great question. I don't know. <coughs> Can we do raffles legally as a church? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or as a Wesleyan also church? A good question. Question. Yeah. We do like fundraisers. We might have to check the bylaws before we. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We'll make sure we're not breaking any Wesleyan ordinances yep. by having a meat raffle. What if it's just a free meat raffle? Because yeah. I've, I've also attended those where like I didn't have to buy raffle tickets. Yeah. It was just like part of the event put your name was in there was a meat raffle. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you come to GLS and yeah, you put your name in the bucket and sure. some people win books. We just do that with frozen meats <laughs> next year. <laughs> Maybe an idea for GLS? Okay, that's a really good idea for GLS. <clears throat> people would probably be pretty excited about it. Yeah. You'd go home with two full racks of ribs. Yes, That'd please. Be great. And now I want some meat. <laughs> I kind of do. Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you head to the service. We're going to go get some barbecue. Uh, <laughs> no, we're going to go there too. You're going to see us in just a minute because we do have a really, really great service. Um, I'm, I'm very excited about this series. I, I, we, I really hope you were with us last week. If not, always go check it out. But uh, this is a great series for us just to really understand who we are, who New Hope is, mm-hmm. and who we are as a part of the church and, and our mission there too. So um, I'm excited for Pastor Mark's message. We have some great worship coming up. It's going to be a really good service. So Michael, thank you for inventing Bro Talk. You're welcome. I'm 
I don't think I invented Whatever it, that was. Uh, Hattie, thank you for producing today. I, I hope Broke Talk comes <coughs> back again. We'll see. Maybe, yeah. you know, once a year might be oh. enough. <laughs> First of the month. Let us yeah. know in the co in the <laughs> comments and in the chat if you feel like that's necessary. But uh, we love you, New Hope family. Thank you so much for being here with us today, and we will see you in just a minute. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. We are so glad that you've joined us. It's week two, Michael. Two. Week two of Be the Church. Week yes. one was awesome. It was really good. Hopefully you joined yeah. us for that. If not, you can always go check that out on our YouTube channel. Uh, but week two, even better. Yeah. We're going to go this week. We are going to go. Where are Let's we going to go? It. We'll find out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Stick with us. Yeah. Pastor Mark has a great message. Yes. But before we get to that, we have a time of worship. So let's worship together.
Let my life be practiced for all eternity. Oh God, I want to practice singing holy, holy, holy. Oh, let my life be practiced for all eternity. Yeah. I got to want to practice singing holy, holy, holy. Oh, let my life be practiced for all eternity. Oh, God, I want to practice singing holy, holy, holy. Let my life be practiced for all eternity. Yeah. Oh, God, I want to practice singing holy, holy, holy. Let my life be practiced. For all eternity. Oh God, I want to practice singing holy, holy, holy. Let my life be practiced for all eternity. Yeah. Oh God, I want to practice.
kids it's a great way for them to engage in a service that's designed for them and the easiest way to get them connected with that is grab a second device if you have one uh, click the link in the chat hand that to their your children so they can focus on that service for them and then you get to focus on this service that's for you yes and church we want to encourage you right now to uh there's a link in the chat that's popping up if you're joining with us live click that and it'll take you to our online connect card and we want to encourage you to fill that out we talk about it every week that's how we build community here on our online campus yeah. uh, so make sure you click that fill it out let us know your name we would love to get to know your name maybe where you're joining us from uh this morning if you have prayer requests you can put that on your connect card as well and as a team we would love to be able to pray over you this week yeah and church we want to continue worship by giving back to god his tithes and our offerings and uh, the easiest way to do that, click the link in the chat. Um, but we want to thank, say thank you to those of you that faithfully give each week. It allows us to do our ministry here, which is to go, grow, and give, which we'll be learning about uh, in this in this series. And so, uh, church, thank you so much for your giving. Yes, and we would love to get to pray for you now. If you are joining with us live uh, in the chat, there's something coming up. And uh, you can click a link, and it'll take you to a private chat where we have a host available that would love to get to pray for you. So if you've got something going on in your life, something heavy that's weighing on you, make sure you uh, request live chat or live prayer uh, to have somebody pray for you right now. But we would love to pray for you as a church as well. So let's pray. 
God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time of worship. Thank you for this church community, God, that uh, you just get to bring together uh, every week to worship you and to praise you. And Lord, we're so grateful for the people that we know about that connect with us every week. And we're so grateful for the many people who are maybe joining with us live right now that we don't even know uh, that get to hear your message, God, and, and be a part of our church family. As we learn about what it means to be the church, God, I pray that you would just uh, speak to each of us individually about our role in the church, God, and what that means and what that looks like, what you have called us to, Lord, uh, that we belong here as part of this church family. And uh, we're just so grateful that that is how you have designed each and every one of us. And Lord, we pray for every person who is joining today, Lord, that uh, they would just know that you are near to them, that you love them, that you see them. God, and that you are present with them wherever they're joining with us right now. Uh, so, Lord, we love you, and we pray this in your name. Amen. Hi, I'm Adam, and my wife Priscilla and I have been attending New Hope for four years, and I work for Youth for Christ. As we talked this week about going and that part of being the church, it reminds me of what God's called me to do every day. As we go and as we share, you begin to see people's lives change, and that's happened for us here. Two Easter's ago here at New Hope, a young man named Michael was baptized. Well, you don't know, maybe don't know about Michael, is that we met him when he was a seventh grader at Williston Middle School. We went and visited a lunch, and this crazy kid comes up to us and sits at our table. We meet him, and he begins coming to Campus Life, an after-school program. And through that, Michael was introduced to who Jesus is and what Jesus has to say about his life. He was introduced to the Bible for the first time. Uh, even though he had experienced a little bit about church, he didn't know about much about God at all. As Michael continued his journey and as we shared faith with him, that takes a lifestyle of sharing. You see, sharing the gospel, we might think about it the way we used to, which is like televangelism or someone comes to a big event. It's much more about sharing with them what God is doing in your life and how he's working and how he also wants to do that in their life. In order to do that, you have to live life together. And for Michael, he began to see that in us and as we continued to share with him, he eventually had an encounter with God for himself. He became a part of New Hope just after that and was baptized during Easter. One of the amazing parts for Michael after his baptism is then he took the responsibility on of going sharing the gospel with his friends. And he's invited many of his friends to start a relationship with Jesus. Uh, one of them, even he led to the Lord. You see, so each of us take that responsibility on as we become Christians. We see this happening all over the place in Youth for Christ, that people understand that they're called to go and do this, and then they choose to take on the mantle of sharing the gospel with other people. And as they go, more and more people hear about it. We see young people taking that responsibility for themselves. We have a group called CORE, and this group's heart is to be a missionary to their own campus. They're taking the responsibility of sharing the gospel with their friends because they know what really makes a difference in a person's life is when the Holy Spirit comes into it and changes their heart. We've been in a series together of sharing Be the Church. That is a catchphrase that we use at the end of every service. As people are ready to leave the service, we say, you are not leaving the church right now. You're going to be the church. Now, that is a whole lot more than just a catchy phrase that we use at the end of the service. It is intended that that is what we are doing. And so this series is looking at what does it actually mean to be the church? Last week, we talked about loving the church. And this week, we're going to take a look at the mission of the church. In the next three weeks, we're going to take a look at that together. And so what we're looking at now is the mission of the church is go, grow, and give. Today, we're looking at the go part of it. It's the idea of sharing our faith with people and 
helping them, lost people, to get found, to know Jesus as their Savior. Now, I grew up in the 60s and the 70s. The idea of going and reaching lost people has been an emphasis of the church from the beginning of the church. And in my history, there were times when that emphasis really came out, especially in 60s, 70s. We've been a church that, uh, the church universal was not doing a whole lot in trying to reach people, and we recognize that. Several organizations came together about that time and emphasizing the idea of we have a responsibility to go. We use the term evangelism or outreach is the way we talked about it then. So as a teenage boy, in fact, I was in junior high the first time I remember going out witnessing or evangelizing. They had gathered us together and given us some training at the church. And then we were going to go out. We were going to go door to door to door and had a survey that we would ask the people uh, what they knew about church or what they knew about Jesus, which would lead to us sharing how to accept Jesus as your Savior. They got us all together and trained us how to do that. And then it was time to go out. And they said, divide yourself up into groups of two. Well, everybody divided up and pretty much everybody had a partner except for Jimmy Turnbow and I. He was seventh grade. I think I was eighth grade. And there was nobody to partner us up with. So as these young kids, we were going out. We started going door to door. Actually, one of them, a uh, lady did accept Jesus as her Savior. At least she went through the motions. Always felt to me like it was just like, oh, you boys are just so cute. Sure, whatever you want me to do, I'll just go ahead and do that. Didn't have much of a satisfied feeling that I was really making an impact for Jesus. That was at the time when Four Spiritual Laws were a booklet that we used a lot. And each of those laws were just, the idea was it's a, it's a very simple process of how to accept the Lord as Savior. We used that when we did the door-to-door -door work. After that, another program came through. I was in high school. It was called Open Air Campaigners. And what we were doing in order to reach people, to go to people that needed to know the Lord as Savior, they had us again trained. We went out and stood on the street corner. I went to a Christian high school, so that's where our training took place. I was a chaplain at that time, the student chaplain, and so I definitely had to be involved. We went to the public high school, stood on the corner, and preached. And then afterwards, trying to catch people and ask them if they'd heard of the four spiritual laws and sharing that with them. Again, I'm not sure how effective that was. Another program came through that we called Evangelism Explosion. And of course, our churches all got involved with it at that point. By this point, I was college or maybe just right out of college. And the emphasis there was starting small groups in homes and inviting unbelievers, people that don't know Jesus, into your home and start a small group and share with them. I don't know that the group I was involved in, again, was very effective. And then to top it off, we had one called Here's Life America. It was another great purpose in going and reaching people for Jesus. That was a telephone campaign. And so what we would do, we divided up the telephone book and in groups of individuals or groups of two, we would go through and just call random numbers just going through the phone book and ask them, if they know Jesus as their savior. Again, I'm not sure how effective it was. The only thing I remember from that one was somebody answering the phone and going, oh, is this Mr. Jones? And the answer was, uh, no, this is Mrs. Jones. And it just was not a highly effective way of going and reaching people. Why did we do it? Because we are desperately believing it's our responsibility to take the gospel to people that have never heard the gospel before. And I'm sure through all of those many different types of programs, there were people that accepted the Lord as Savior, but they weren't highly effective. Why do we have a church? Why do we have new hope? What are we here for? You see, there can be a lot of substitute 
reasons for why we have the church, and every one is a ghost mission. It's not why we are actually here. They can get us off track, and we can say, well, we had church, but did we really accomplish the mission of what God wanted us to do? So we need to find out and ask, what is Jesus' priority? I want to read to you from Luke chapter 15, a story that Jesus himself shared. It's a parable. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not have the night or leave the ninety and nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Jesus sits down with the people to share this story. There are actually two groups of people, very distinct groups of people that he's speaking to at that point. One are the people that are called uh, tax collectors and sinners. They are the ones that blatantly are not living for God. They are doing things that not only culturally are wrong, but biblically were wrong. They were the ones that were most interested in what Jesus had to say. And so they were the ones gathered immediately around him. They were close. They wanted to hear. They were anxious. He was teaching in ways that they hadn't heard before from church people. Now, outside of that group were others, and it was definitely outside because these two groups would not mingle at all. They were standing back and judging the whole encounter and what Jesus had to say. They were not like the sinners that were saying, I want to learn more. They were looking to see what was wrong. What do we object to? What is not appropriate in what Jesus is saying? They did not want to associate with those sinners that were close to Jesus at all because they were the righteous ones. They were the most churched people of the day. Both of those groups were listening to what Jesus had to say. And he tells this parable. Actually, there's two or three parables, and if you want to look it up around that scripture, in addition to that, it it's, uh, joins up with the lost sheep, the lost son, the lost coin. Same group, same group that heard the story of the prodigal son, of the one who is away from Jesus, and Jesus or away from his father, and, and how much he wants to reach him. Jesus' chosen lifestyle, get this, Jesus' chosen lifestyle was to ignore the most religious people and to go to the lost. That's what this parable is all about. Lost souls are God's highest priority and passion. Now, he cares about the 99. He is a shepherd. The, the picture of this is he's a shepherd. He has 100 sheep. 99 of them are safe. They are all together, but one is missing. Now, in our economy, 99 would be more important than one. In Jesus' economy, any lost soul is what is his priority, to get to that person, to bring them into the fold. They understand, the 99 understand, they matter. In fact, in the scripture, it talks about it. In John 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. So the 99 are not unimportant to him. But when it comes to a lost sheep, that's what matters the most to him. He goes after them. The 99 gathered sheep are secondary to his care for the lost one. That's what God does on a regular basis. If there is somebody that doesn't know him, that is his priority. Now, I always had the picture of him gathering these 99 sheep, make sure they're all in the fold, the rock pen around them, get them all there so they are safe, then I can go after and find the one. 
But it's interesting to me that it says here that he left the 99 in the open country. There was a security and a safety in that the flock was together and he could go after the one that was lost. Now, again, in our thinking, oh, no, the 99 is what's most important. We lose one. I don't want to lose more of the 99, so I better spend the time with them. But secure sheep too easily can become our main focus. It's always what's happening in the church. Churches lose their mission. Instead of realizing our mission first and foremost is to go, we think our mission is to protect everybody that we have. Make sure we don't lose anybody from here. And that becomes what is most important to the church. So we spend all of our time caring for the 99, making sure that they're comfortable, making sure that everything is really good that way, making sure that we build a really nice fold that they can stay in. I mean, we build our churches. We make them very nice. We need to realize a church, a church building, is only a toolbox to hold the tools for us to do what our mission is about. It's not where the church is. The church is us going out to reach those that don't know Jesus. So the shepherd in this parable leaves the 99 and goes after that one because that's what he's passionate about. Lost souls absolutely break the heart of Jesus. Oh, he loves the, all the sheep. There's no question. And, and I don't want to give the impression that he doesn't care about those in, that are secure in the fold, those that, he, that do know him are following him. But his heart breaks for the ones that don't know him. When he began his ministry, he stood up basically in his own local church. It was a synagogue. But he stood there, and in Luke 4 it tells us that he speaks these words. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. Oddly enough, as good as this sounds, like, oh, that's that's a nice thing. In, In our churches today, if we had a young man stand up and say, this is what I'm called to do, we'd say, oh, that's nice. And we'd pat him on the back and say, isn't that wonderful? The people that Jesus spoke this to got angry. The people in his church were angry of why are you wanting to go out to somebody else and reach those who are hurting when you could stay here with us? It's the passion of God to go to the lost. With Zacchaeus, a young man that um, wanted to hear Jesus, but he was a man far from God. He was one of those tax collectors. In Luke, it says, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The religious people that heard Jesus say this to Zacchaeus were angry about the whole thing, just like those in his home church. When a prostitute came to Jesus and she poured perfume on his feet and she wept over her sins, Simon was there, and Simon goes, man, if, he, if you knew what kind of woman this is that is touching you, touching your feet and weeping on them and pouring the, the perfume on them and all of that, boy, you would be offended. And Jesus said, no, this is who I came for. And Simon was angry with Jesus. After the triumphal entry, when Jesus came near his death and he was coming in and they had the great procession and everybody sang glory to God in the highest and the the son of David is coming and all of this kind of great stuff that they were saying, Jesus went out of the city and he overlooked it. And it says, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. And he said, oh. If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it's hidden from your eyes. Another place it said, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus always looks at the church and loves the church. There's no question about that, but he's always also looking beyond just those gathered 
to those that need to be gathered. But this is not a story about lostness, not about focusing on the sheep, but the passion of the shepherd. His passion is for lost souls. If you want to be like Jesus, you need to have that same kind of a passion. So lost souls are Jesus' passion. Lost souls need to be our priority and our passion as well. Matthew 19, then Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And his very next act after saying that, pray for workers, is, okay, you guys are going out. And he sent them out into the harvest field to share the gospel with other people. There are four fallback positions that we often do in the church. One is we develop a fortress mentality. He never intended that we all stay in the fold all the time, in the church. If you want to say, in the church building, protected from the world, and it's just us, and we're going to stay pure, and we're going to stay good, and the world is out there, and the world is against us, and so we need to build this fortress around us so that we stay safe from the world. Always, his plan is to get out of the fold. Go to those that are lost, that need you. That is always his intention for us. So one of the fallback conditions is this fortress. Let's just protect us and keep us safe and pure. A second one is the comfort mentality. That really what we're here for is for all of these believers that are in the church building to be comfortable. Let's make sure the music is what they like. Let's make sure the preaching is what they like. Let's make sure they're comfortable. Let's make sure that the chairs are padded well enough that they don't get too antsy having to sit there for too long. Don't push us out of our comfort zone. We wanna be comfortable in church. Church was never intended for your comfort. It's intended as a place that prods you and encourage you to go out the doors and to be the church, to go to those people that do not know the Lord. Oh, another fallback position is a consumer mentality. It's all about me. So you make it the way that I want it. It comes right after the comfort. We want to be comfortable. And when you say or do anything that makes us uncomfortable, we do not want that to be the case. Church is supposed to be here for me. Keep me happy. Therefore, if I object to anything, you better pay attention and make sure that you do it the way I want things to be done. Another fallback mentality, instead of really being the church, is that we have an attraction mentality. But let's just make our program and what we do inside the walls of the church so good that other people want to come into it. Now, that sounds pretty good. We want to have quality in everything that we do so that if someone does walk into our doors, they're attracted to Jesus. That's valuable. We think that's important. But to have the idea that we stay in here and if other people want to find Jesus, we're right here. They know where to find us. They can come. That is not the mentality of Jesus. His is constantly going forth, going out to others, not just us being together again. That's not what church is about. We come together. and Obviously, as a pastor, I think, a worship service, that weekly celebration is really important. I want the music to be awesome. I do my best to make the preaching good. Everything that we do, we want people to be comfortable. We want them to be fulfilled as they come in. But it's not so they can walk out of here and say, oh, wow, we did church. Check that off the box. All of our church responsibility is done because we showed up at a place or we watched a video or we did whatever. No, 
The whole purpose of the church is to seek and to save those who are lost. Do you have the, she the shepherd's passion and heart? Boy, I, I think there have been times in my life when I was just quite satisfied to be comfortable with church and not necessarily going out to reach the lost. Now, as I said, as I started this, this message, there were a lot of ways we tried to do it that were totally uncomfortable for me and very questionable of how effective they were for the kingdom. Now, fortunately, God uses every attempt that we make, whether we do it right or whether we don't do it right. He blesses that and he brings people into the kingdom. But it's our responsibility to build relationships with people that are lost, to show them that we love and we care for them. It's not just about us being together. It's not just about the church being gathered in a building. It's about being the church by going out, impacting the lives of others, introducing them to Jesus. If there are no lost people coming to Jesus, we are not the church. Oh, we call ourselves a church, but we're not having the heart and the passion of Jesus. If we want to be like Jesus, then we are constantly looking for those that don't know Jesus. Follow his direction because he will lead you to the people that he has prepared and has them already thinking towards him or going through struggles in life where they're going, man, I need some answers. Those are the people, if you are looking for God's will, he will lead you to those people and you will have the opportunity to show the heart and the passion of Jesus. So let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, that needs to be our heart. We want it to be our heart. There are some times when we feel that way very much, other times when life is just busy and just doing church with church people is enough. Lord, may you remind us again and again what your passion is. Your passion is not just to gather your people together, but your passion is for us to go to those that are lost and don't know you. May we have that same passion. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Church, what a great message from Pastor Mark, and we really hope that you found it valuable and that it encourages you to take a next step. Yes, and a great next step we would love to encourage you to do is check out our Grow Podcast. Mm -hmm. It's a podcast that uh, comes out Monday morning, 6 a.m., really early, so if you like if you like that early morning stuff, that's for you. Not for me. Actually, it's for everyone. It you is. Can, you can watch it, it anytime. <laughs> uh, but we want to encourage you to check it out because uh, Pastor Mark just takes his message and goes a little bit deeper, stuff that he couldn't get to on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we encourage you, you can check it out on uh, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and uh, yeah, just check it out today. Yes, and also going along with our current series is we have a Bible reading plan that we would love to have you join us in. So if you text the word church to 701-501-8002, one, one day it. I hope you make a jingle for that. Could you, could you do <laughs> that work for on us? That, yeah, that'd be really fun. <laughs> but if you text that word to that phone number, it should be on the screen here too, uh, you will get a, a series of scriptures every Monday morning that go along with the message that Pastor Mark taught on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really, really good. So we encourage you to text that number now so you get into that scripture reading with us. Yeah, and church, as always, we want to encourage you to come back next week, but don't come alone. Bring yeah. someone with you to watch and, and engage in the service. So church, until then, let's go and be the church.